OK, so let's start uh, knowing our new friend, the psychopath friend called JavaScript. Um, I started this slide with this uh, very nice uh, cheat sheet, <laughs> or there's a lot of resources, but just uh, in a couple of pages, uh, gives you the summary of the main uh, objects and methods uh, of the JavaScript language. Uh, oh, I keep it handy sometimes, uh, um, but just for, let's say, it's yet another language to learn uh, that's with its own uh, basic library or standard library. But we are trying to treat it uh, you know, as a regular language. So for the first hours, we are not going to care about the web, about web technologies, about web pages, about the browsers. Let's start to understand the basics of the language, OK? By difference with respect to the other languages that you already know, of course. Or by, by, not by difference, but by say, completing or building upon the knowledge that we have uh, about the other languages. Hmm? Uh, we will uh, work on the latest versions, not the real, really, uh, not the really latest, uh, but uh, no, the modern version of JavaScript. JavaScript has a long story, and I need to spend some time also in dealing with the story of JavaScript because it motivates a lot of design choices uh, that we have to suffer with today, no, still today. Um, we, JavaScript is a language, and so it needs to be, it's an interpreter language, it's much more than that, much more than interpreter because it's a just-in-time compiler, so it's interpreter and compiler. Let's not go, to, go into that. Let's say it's an interpreter language, so it needs an interpreter to run. And basically, we have uh, some interpreters that are built uh, inside the different browsers. So every browser has uh, a JavaScript engine inside that is able to execute JavaScript code. Plus, uh, we have extra, let's say, runtimes, uh, extra interpreters that are used on the desktop or on the, on the server side. No. The most known one is Node, not JS, but it's not the only one. There's Dino, there's other, other, other projects coming along. There's Electron. All the many applications are built on the Electron framework, which actually bundles the uh, JavaScript engine from Chrome into a desktop application. So there are many environments uh, in which JavaScript programs can run. And of course, every environment has their own variation of the standard library. Hmm? Because if you're running on a server, you don't have all the events uh, managing user clicks because there are no users there, and, and vice versa, OK? So we start with the language, and then the library will be provided by the runtime environment. There are some libraries that are common, and some that are specific. And also some, uh, um, some features uh, or some, yeah will be available in a different way in different environments. For example, one on pain <laughs> is that the way of importing modules uses different syntaxes, different methods in the, on the client and on the server. And there's a long transition that is already years uh, that where they're trying to unify the two methods, but when you have a long history of, uh, of 20 years of code, it's very difficult to change something as as fundamental as the import statement. So there are differences, but the core of the language uh, is the same. And by the way, the language is evolving, and is evolving quite significantly. So every new year, there's a new version. Well, the new version of the specification. And then there's, there are the implementations of the new specification into different browsers that may come at different times. Some browser may be faster in implementing something. Some browser may implement something before even it, goes, it gets into the standard. Uh, some browser may lack maybe, maybe one or two years. So the JavaScript language is a moving target. If you're writing an instruction, especially if you are using the newer features of the language, you are not 100% sure that the runtime in which this is going to run, which is the browser of your customers that you don't know, or your user, not customers. Uh, it depends on what browser they install. Maybe something still has an Internet Explorer 6 on their computer and they're trying to visit your website. And that is stuck with the version of JavaScript of 10 years ago. Will it run? Well, there's a lot of techniques. JavaScript evolved a lot in this uh, 
area called uh, transpiling or uh, uh, providing, uh, say, in the old version of JavaScript something that is able to translate the new version into the old uh, syntax that is understandable by the old browser. So that's a complexity that tells us, uh, uh, in many cases, is not the code that they write that is running, but a, a code that is generated, starting from the code that they write, and is recompiled into an older version of JavaScript, or a different version of JavaScript. There's a lot of complexity this way. But it's also open the possibility of having newer forms of syntaxes that can be understood also by older version of runtimes. And that is what is keep uh, the evolution going, because otherwise nobody would dare introducing a new feature if, it's, if it wasn't supported by all the browsers today. Okay, and so what happens is that there are some browsers that today are really still, um, really actually implementing that feature, and other browsers that are only emulating it with software in some way, in some other. So that's one kind of complexity. But we'll come to that later when we see bigger framework. What is JavaScript? Stupid question. It's a language. And it's uh, the mandatory language for front-end development because it's the only language which is bundled into the browsers. You may like it or not. Uh, initially, some company called Microsoft didn't like it. At the first year of JavaScript, they tried to invent, okay, oh, JavaScript is but it's developed by Mozilla Corporation. Oh, sorry, Netscape Corporation at that time. And so it's a competition. We want to be able to write program on the client, on, the, on our browser, say Microsoft, so we will invent a different language called VBScript. It died immediately, okay? Because uh, you can, in the web world, you cannot do anything if you are not aligned with your competitors. It's very good you know, case of standards and interoperability, well, more interoperability than standards in many cases, being more important than competition. You cannot push something which is not compatible with the existing base of users, browsers, servers, protocols, and so on. And so the world standardized on a single language uh, on the client side. While on the server side, you can have many different languages, you don't care. It's no, locked away in your server room. Nobody cares about what language you're running on the server. But your client application on the front end must use uh, the three languages of the web, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's it. Hmm? OK, so that's the reason why JavaScript still continues to be the most popular language just because it's mandatory in the biggest part of the ecosystem. Um, well, it's, uh, the, the name of the language isn't even really JavaScript. Uh, you may know that uh, uh, the, the Java part of the name has really nothing to do with Java, really. Uh, we're just a, a marketing prank. Basically, because uh, at the beginning uh, the, there was this Netscape Corporation which were developing the first browser. They wanted to insert a, a scripting language, and they needed a name for that. At the same time, the Sun Microsystem was pushing the development of the Java language. And so they said, okay, they are putting a lot of market, marketing money of the, on the name Java, so let's call our language JavaScript. But they, were, they are totally separate. They have nothing in common. Okay. Um, the interesting part, uh, which is interesting for us even today, that the first version was written in 10 days by one person. Okay. And some, you can understand the design choices that you make, uh, the short, design shortcuts that you make when you're designing an, a, a whole new programming language in 10 days. Uh, and some of those design choices turned out to be wrong or to be dangerous, and we still have to suffer from them today hmm? for, the sake of, oh, for the sake of compatibility mostly. Um, OK, let's we'll leave with those. That's why it's important uh, to, to know a bit about the history of the language. So this story dates back to 1995. 
Were you born then? No. OK. I was. Um, where the first press release announced that the new, the new version of uh, the Nescape Navigator, probably version 2 if I remember well, had some new exciting features uh, for doing animations in the page. Oh, how can you do animation with a, with a document language like HTML? Well, by injecting some code into the page. That was the breakthrough. Um, OK, that was one proposal but one company by one, one company, one private company. And then people started to see that it was a good idea, but they didn't want uh, to let the control of the language to just one company. So they set up a standardization committee uh, for standardizing language. You know, for example, the C language was initially born uh, you know, by Cunningham Ritchie and then was standardized by ISO with all the new versions and so on. And the same happened with JavaScript, uh, which was uh, brought on by a committee of a, of a standardization body that no, nobody knows, uh, which is called ECMA. I don't even remember what it stands for. ECMA International is a standardization body, maybe in Switzerland, if I remember well. Um, and they took over the, this project uh, of this new language, and they called it uh, the ECMAScript uh, script uh, language, because JavaScript was a trademark word, word. was trademarked already, so they couldn't use that. So the official name of JavaScript is ECMAScript, but you cannot pronounce this word, okay? And so let's call it JS, hmm. JavaScript. Uh, the official name is the ECMAScript, and it's standardized by this uh, committee. They standardized something. They added, they uh, recognized some new syntax because uh, from 1995 there was a very minimal language and they tried to add something. Uh, for example, the object uh, notation and uh, uh, prototype means inheritance and classes uh, and exceptions uh, were added later in the, in the language. But actually, this process here didn't get much attention. Okay, there was this standardization committee that just basically took whatever the language status was and put that into writing. And as you see, it was a quite uh, stagnant process. From version three to version five, four never was defined. Uh, 10 years elapsed. So nobody really cared about this. And there was different uh, that was one part of the so-called browser wars, where we had Microsoft, uh, uh, Apple, Sun, and uh, a different company fighting about the dominance of the browsers. We have more browsers than we have today, and each of them try to be better and try to innovate also on the language and the, on the features. So it's a wild, it was a wild period where everybody was just throwing ideas and experimenting new things. But then they recognized that the foundation of JavaScript was too weak to build significant uh, uh, applications and uh, too weak uh, uh, to be really standard. Okay, they started to recognize that, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you remember, there was a lot of websites that, were with, that started with, it's, this website is best viewed with, with Internet Explorer, for example which is a very ugly thing to do on the web. Today, it will not be acceptable. Huh? So they, the industry understood that it was better you know, to focus on a common ground of technologies instead of just fighting each other for more features at the damage of the users. Hmm? Um, and so they, they worked on a new version of JavaScript called ES5, ECMAScript 5. Um, that introduced uh, what we are now called, uh, calling strict mode, which basically introduced a non-compatibility with the past. So I mean, from this point in time, uh, the JavaScript is not, no longer compatible with the previous one. It's an opt-in feature that, of course, you can select, uh, but it's actually it's a new version of the language, more polished, more you know, programmer-friendly because really there were really ugly things uh, in the past, okay? 
And so they refounded the language on a, that's a, on a clearer foundation. And now we have a, a cycle of every couple of years, basically, there's a new version. Hmm? Uh, new version, which has this numbering uh, related to the year of publication and also the incremental number of the version and going forward. So right now this committee is really working every year and this is a standardization committee where the major industries are se um, sending people to work there and uh, these people try to push the language into one direction or another according to their mother companies' uh, uh, commercial needs. No? So there's a lot of interesting dynamics behind the development of this language because it leads a lot of economical interest. Okay, we are uh, targeting uh, at the minimum the language defined in 2015, which is nine years from now, but there was a significant shift uh, where we had the first, uh, let's say, um, foundation for, object -oriented, for a good object-oriented programming and functional programming in the language. Okay, so these features are fundamental for us today. Uh, there's something more also in the vision, so we are going to use also something from the more rec most recent version, but let's say the latest revolution was here, okay? From this point on, we have what we call modern JavaScript. That is still evolved, it's not just as one uh, feature, but uh, it's a set of features uh, starting from that point. Okay, uh, so this is just a description of what you already saw in the picture. If you want to read the XMAX script uh, specification, it's in the language, but uh, beware with very something like uh, 400 pages, uh, extremely technical version because they describe uh, how the um, language features are, would be interpreted by an ideal virtual machine that implements a lower level language uh, that we defined also in this document. So it's, not, it's totally not uh, for the programmer. You can understand, uh, if you are you know, fond of compilers and the implementation of languages, it's very, very interesting, uh, but it's not for learning the, the language. But if you want, uh, if you have some megabytes spare in your computer, you can download it. And, uh, okay, mm, as you said, there are different engines uh, with different interpreters that implement this language, various versions of this language, you know, uh, uh, the, the most famous one is the uh, V8 engine that was developed by Google in Chrome and now is available, of course, in all the browsers derived from Chrome. So the Chromium free version, Microsoft Edge today, and also Safari is in the latest version. Is, uh, was using uh, uh, JavaScript interpreted by, by Apple, but now is also is, you move, they moved to, to use the, the V8 uh, interpreted by Google. And uh, Node.js itself was built by extracting the V8 code from Chromium and packaging it as a standalone, um, say, executable. So they all come from the same source. Uh, the only other, basically, competitor is the uh, JavaScript engine by Mozilla Foundation, so that's one coming in, uh, in Firefox. Uh, so, there are different browsers, but when it comes to interpreting JavaScript instructions, actually, the world is only running two libraries, which is not so good for competition and not so good for if there's a bug in one of these libraries, it can be a security flow in one of these libraries can be exploited immediately in 90% of the browsers worldwide. Okay, but that's the situation. We hope uh, from the, that, the, that from the programming point of view, this would be mostly transparent. We hope. If we stick to the, what is the consolidated standard, which is not the published standard, uh, we should be no, nearly, uh, we, we shouldn't really rely too much or we shouldn't care too much about uh, the runtime that uh, our application is using. And uh, the Mozilla pages, uh, the MDN, Mozilla Development Network pages, uh, is very useful because for each and every construct of the language, it provides you a compatibility matrix 
that is telling you, for example, this was for uh, some the fetch. Uh, fetch is a, is, a, is, a, is a function for doing client-server interactions, and the specification fetch is comprised of a set of features, of a set of functions and properties of the objects, and it's telling you for the different browsers, desktop or mobile browsers, uh, which is the minimum version of that browser which is implementing correctly the functionality. Uh, and, um, or which browsers are not supporting it at all. So you see some of them, of course, are discontinued, really are discontinued, they are not updated anymore, and mostly the others are. Uh, and, um, okay, so th these are the kind of uh, information that we tell, uh, or if it's mostly green, it means that a given feature can be used on the wild in your application. If it's somewhat red, uh, well, it's better to wait maybe one year until the browsers uh, uh, so can support it. Um, by the way, uh, Chrome and Edge and, and uh, the new version of Safari are, as I said, they are all based on the same library, but at different levels of, of development. So for example, it's known that Apple is quite slow in integrating new version of the JavaScript engine into Safari, and so they tend to have a version which is one year older than the one we have in Chrome. Can be, I'm not judging, okay, can be, there are design choices. Just be aware, as I said before, that the newest versions, the newest features of the language are a moving target. If we stick on the basic uh, features, we have no problems. But uh, uh, from the point of view of developers uh, or developers of libraries and tools, uh, this is a very important issue because there is not one standard. If you are if you're writing a C++ compiler, you have the ISO standard with all the test set. You need to pass this test in this way. Uh, with JavaScript, there is no prescribed set of feature. There is no, you cannot say this browser implements uh, version ES19 or whatever. Because it will implement some features in this specification and maybe not all of them. But maybe can, uh, or can also implement some features of the newest version. So it's more, you cannot declare a version. You can declare the features that you are implementing across the language. So I, this version is implementing these features and are not, is, is not implementing yet that other feature. So there are mechanisms for understanding or querying whether a given feature is supported or not that are built into the language. Because the library should know whether they can call a method because this method exists, is implemented, or not. Or it was in a way which is different from the past. Uh, as, an, as application developers, uh, we, we are trusting the library developers or the compiler developers. But those people really need to be aware and uh, now they're working on X, uh, try to not do a bad step uh, and breaking something because they are using a function that maybe on this browser is not supported or is implemented in a way with a, in a buggy way, for example. What they say is that JavaScript is uh, backwards compatible but not forwards compatible. What does it mean? It means that uh, if something is accepted as very JavaScript, uh, there will not be a future change to the language that causes that code to become invalid JavaScript. It means that if you're writing something today, there's the guarantee from the language developers that in the 10 years from now, your website will still be running. Even if the language evolved, they will not break the compatibility with old code. It's not backwards compatible, it's not sorry, forward compatible in the sense that uh, the code that you're running today may not run on older browsers. So you write some code today, today you have a situation of the browsers. If you're writing for today, the future will not break your application. But you cannot expect uh, that it's going to work on older browsers. Okay? Uh, in a HTML, it would be actually the reverse. Okay? An HTML page should also work on older browsers because HTML has a built-in mechanism to discard and ignore all the tags that are not recognized at that level of the language. 
but ignoring a tag in a text document uh, is, means that something is not formatted well, but the content will be there. You cannot do that with a programming language. Where you ignore an instruction, you ignore a while because while was not defined, so you are totally breaking the program. No? So there are different philosophies. And so having a backwards compatible language like JavaScript uh, combined with a forwards compatible language with HTML creates interesting scenarios. But um, in 2015, we introduced, they introduced uh, strict mode, which is a non-compatible change, so it's the only non-compatible change in the long history of JavaScript, which as we decide, as we saw, is longer than your life. Um, because, and they finally, I would say, as a programmer, disabled some dangerous semantics. Uh, something that was actually, just to be scary, every variable was global. And if you define a variable down there, then it will appear up there and change the uh, and we'll, we'll be merged with another value of the same name in a different module. So something that was really dangerous from the programming point of view. And of course, today we are always working in what is called strict mode, which is normal mode, okay? Uh, in some cases we need to write uh, that we want to write in strict mode, but in many cases it's a default. Mm -hmm. And uh, how can we, <clears throat> Accept that different versions of the language and different versions of the runtimes are living at the same time. Of course, as a programmer, I would be crazy or I would become crazy if I had to adapt or query myself every time I write a statement and say, okay, but this version of JavaScript, does it support breaking a string or does it support this no, feature of regular expressions or not? Because that's the reality. Different features are supported in different Different sets of features are supported by different browsers. It's impossible for me to program with all of this in mind. So we developed a set of tools based on transpiling, meaning you take a, a version of JavaScript according to the newest standard, and there's an automatic tool that re rewrites this code using an older syntax. So everything that is using a newer syntax is just translated in the equivalent or nearly equivalent, sometimes you cannot do a full equivalence, a nearly equivalent uh, syntax using the, that will run also on older versions. Actually, there's uh, one, Babel is one of these, uh, you know, remember the Tower of Babels where all the languages were mixed, uh, and we'll try to support that here. Um, where you're declaring which is the lowest version of the browsers you want to applica your application to run, and it will provide all the translations. And the other is uh, so-called uh, polyfilling. It means uh, if uh, a newer version of JavaScript has a method of some class that was not in previous version, you just provide a library that injects these methods into the standard library classes. JavaScript is able to do that, do that kind of thing. It's very dynamic as a language, so you can redefine even the methods of the fundamental objects uh, uh, so that you can enhance or modify the, um, also the behavior of built-in objects uh, using source code. Of course, it will not be as efficient because it will be implemented as a JavaScript library instead of the inside the, the, the runtime itself, but it can support. So all of these tricks uh, makes it uh, quite, they are complex tricks, uh, but uh, for the, say, the, um, as we will see in React, uh, when we're going to React, uh, we'll use these techniques uh, uh, it's all managed by, by libraries, so okay, we, we don't see it uh, just as some time for the startup of the project because it needs to read your code and recompile it into another version of JavaScript, which is the one which is running. And then it will be really fun to, to debug that because the code that is running is not the code that you wrote, but it's the code that you was modified. So, okay, it's a, it's a complex ecosystem. ecosystem. Okay. Just to summarize, uh, uh, when we call about, uh, when you talk about JavaScript, the, the execution environments are different. And here we, we are trying to put some updated uh, links uh, about which versions uh, you could or you should use, uh, or they are recommended for different, uh, um, from the different, uh, different type of environments. So everything, the core is starting from Node.js website, uh, but there are different, uh, packaging solutions that uh, uh, try to 
manage the possibility of installing different versions of Node in the same computer. Because as we saw this year, we are trying to use Node 20. And uh, maybe you have a project that you wrote last year that is not compatible Node 20. You need a Node 18, which was a previous LTR version. How, how can you do that in the same computer? And so there are tools for managing multiple versions so that uh, you bundle an application with a given version of the Node uh, runtime, for example. Um, we also use some, uh, there's a nice website called Python Tutor, which is also have a, a JavaScript version that you can visualize uh, the, the data structures, especially for small examples, will help us to understand the, the data model. No? This is an example of what ha uh, comes out in Java JavaScript Tutor. You write some code here, and you, you can run the code, of course, uh, and you can really display the, uh, the data structure, the variable, the values, the arrays, uh, and especially with understanding the object model, it will help us uh, a lot uh, to, to be able, uh, at least for me, it helps me a lot to visualize what is really happen, happening in, the, in my code. Uh, also, the browsers have a, <coughs> a JavaScript environment, and you, uh, we see that uh, uh, the JavaScript also bundle a, a console for running JavaScript commands, all of the, all the browsers, and, uh, uh, and the debugger. So even if uh, you're not a programmer, your browser already has that, those features. We can just call them. Okay, usually F12 brings up the JavaScript debugger and console. You can run programs on our own, or you can debug programs that are running in the web page. Okay. Uh, this was the history. Now we have to start no, knowing the language. I think that this chapter change is... Uh, fit for doing a break here because it's 11.30. So we can come back in uh, 15 minutes.